Actually, in music, the role of the engineer is to be the person, number one, that controls everything in the studio in terms of knowing how to work the equipment, uh, knowing how to facilitate the best record, and to be able to uh, help a producer and an artist come to fruition with whatever record that they're trying to bring about. You know, someone mentally may think of something, but the engineer is the person who has to translate that into the physical world, or should I say the sonic world. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the art of it. The art is taking ideas from different people and different requests from the producer or the artist and actually translating that. Um, and I think that is the, is the key, is that you're taking someone else's idea and adding your own spice to it to give them uh, a final product that they're happy with. You try to pull the best performance out of an artist. I think that's really one of the main things that I do um, that sort of cannot be taught in a school. It's something that you have to experience and learn how to do because every person is different. Every artist is different. So, you know, when you're making a happy song, you know, you have to put them in that mood. If they're making a sad song, you have to kind of put them in that mood as well. Sometimes I'm trying to make an artist angry without them knowing about it so that the song comes out more aggressive. I always try to make the artist into the best them that they can be. I sometimes have a vision for an artist, but I'll discuss that with them. When I sit down with the artist, the very first thing is I ask them, well, what do you want out of this? That's very key, mm -hmm. because if you just want to be famous, I can get you to that point. If you just want to be rich, I can also get you to that point. But there are certain key things that people are adhering to that they love. Or there's a reason why they make music, and everyone's reason is different. Sometimes I have an idea for them that may not be what they want for themselves. So that's sort of my job is to figure out what they want for themselves. And then sometimes new artists don't know. They have no idea. So you sort of have to guide them to say, OK, let's find out who you are. Let's find out what it is that you really want out of this. And let's do that. I don't try to lock the artist into a particular type of thing. I think too many times in the music business, um, art, what, what happens is artists come in they get signed for a reason or they get attention for a reason. There's this initial thing that they do on their own that gets them attention and or it's some reason why you're even drawn to them to want to work with them. And too many times in the music business we have these cookie cutter roles of people or a company will look at an artist outside of their company and say, hey, we need one of those. Mm -hmm. And they try to form an artist into whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So my thing is to say, okay, this is not a, you know, a sheet of dough and we're just putting, you know, cook the same cookie over and over again. I try to figure out how to make that person the best them. I think we've gotten to a point now where people understand the power of the brand. And I don't mean just clothing brands. I mean just the brand itself, the, the, the idea of a brand. Because authenticity is one of the, the biggest things in hip hop. If you're not authentic, if people don't believe that you really are who you say you are, or that I can trust that every time I come to you I'm going to get some type of quality, then your brand, you yourself as the brand, doesn't have any value. So we're in a time now where <clears throat> the actual album or the music used to be the thing that was the center. That was the thing that we absolutely were trying to sell. I would spend 350 500 even, you know, if take someone like Busta Rhymes, spend a million dollars on a video, all of that is promotion mm -hmm. to sell a song, to sell an album. Mm -hmm. Now because music is relatively free or it, the value of, of what we're trying to sell has to be more than just music. You have to give them an experience. So if the music was in the center, now the artists themselves are in the center and that is the brand. Yeah. So branding is a very specific thing because it's, you know, I always say, I have this saying where I say vibe over money, where if it doesn't feel right, no amount of money should make you do it. What does that mean? It means that it's gonna cost you more if you do something that is away from where your brand stands, now you're gonna lose fans and inevitably lose money. I'm very conscious of what type of brand that I put into the world. And I also am, am conscious of <clears throat> children and people that are coming up underneath of me. My um, sphere that I work in was sort of this uh, black art that was passed down in studios. You know, engineers 
were trained by other engineers. You know, it's not that old of a science. The recording business is not that old. It's not, you know, hundreds of years old where there's a huge thing. You can actually go to the creators of certain things. You know, God bless the dead, Tom Dowd, you know, is not here with us anymore. But, you know, you could have went to Tom Dowd and he's the guy who decided to take it from being rotary things to actual faders. You can go out and talk to, you know, a Les Paul or someone like that who created, you know, recording one sound on top of another sound. It's not that old of a science. So now that the studios themselves are not around as much because of the fact that MP3s have basically driven our music business to be self-contained, there wasn't really this space anymore for me to teach younger engineers, which was one of the reasons why I said, okay, I need to open this up to the world to be able to teach because I love the art so much that I don't want it to die with me. It's not about hoarding secrets. It's about passing them on to the next generation of people that want to continue the art form. There's a three-headed monster with me. Uh, one is I engineer um, and create records. Another one is I DJ. Right? And, and I feel like being in that live setting and having instant feedback is great for me. I get a lot of response from DJing uh, all different types of music all over the world to all different age groups and that's the challenge everyone is different you know I may walk into a club and do a complete reggae set you know I may walk into some posh club in London and play top 40 you know and I may be in one of the grimiest hip-hop clubs that people around me may be scared to walk into in Brooklyn you know and play just a real hardcore hip-hop set um, and the third part is education is is going around and making sure that people really understand and respect the culture from which I come from, where I can peel back some of the layers of, of fluff that are there to, to create this, this aura around artists, where the aura necessarily doesn't have to be around me. My thing is for information giving, and that, that's really what it is. So the more tangible I am to the common everyday man, it makes my job easier. It's, and, and again, it's a two-way street of me giving them the information and then them being able to receive the information from me. And I think far beyond when I'm gone, I would love for people to sit down and listen to the music that I've had a hand in creating and get something from that. You know, I could sit and talk to you all day about what I believe in, how I think. I think that the biggest thing is for someone to put the Blueprint album on and to really intensely listen to why we did whatever we did on that album. That's the thing that's gonna last the test of time. That's the thing that Bob Marley does. It, it impacts a new generation every single year based off of music. Then they get into who he was as a person. But if they didn't enjoy the music, they wouldn't care who he was as a person.